Okay. So hello everyone. Um, I'm Livia Campos de Menezes, the Wild and Scenic Film Festival Director. The Wild and Scenic is a production of Circle, the South Yuba River Citizens League, whose mission is to unite the community to protect and restore the Yuba River watershed. Circle works on the ancestral and traditional homelands of the Nisenan tribe and includes shared boundaries with the Mountain Maidu, Kenkau, and Washu peoples. These tribes have lived here for millennia and live here still. We acknowledge and mourn the painful history of genocide and the devastation of lands and waters irreversibly altered. We're grateful for opportunities to partner with the tribes to create a shared vision and rebalance our relationship to this place. I am super excited to be here with you today. I want to give first a big shout out to our art committee. These people have worked tirelessly and dedicated their time to help curate this exhibition. I also want to thank our judges, Cello Montoya, Josh Harrison, and John Atsulas, who had the most challenging task of all, deciding on the 2022 winners. I want to thank our staff and volunteers who have supported us throughout this process. And finally, I want to thank our talented artists. We could not have had this exhibition without you. Each year, Wild and Scenic hosts an environmentally themed art exhibition where artists submit their work for a chance to be selected and displayed at one of our local venues. Similar, similarly to last year, um, for 2022, our exhibition is happening online. Each artist has their own page on our website and each of their selected works is part of an online gallery. I hope you can explore the inspiring work and support the artists who are a part of it. As a surprise for 2022, we also decided to have the winner's exhibition at a new place in town, Fable Coffee. So I invite you to check out the artwork we have there as you sip their delicious coffee. For the 2022 art exhibition, artists were encouraged to submit pieces that inspire environmental activism through art and highlight the beauty of the natural world. Our theme was Currents of Hope and we accepted entries in three categories, photography, two and three dimensional. We received around a hundred entries from all around the world and aided by the Wild and Scenic Art Committee, six to one artists were juried into the show. The quality of the artwork this year was exceptional. As our judges here can testify, it was not easy to choose the winners. But before we get to that, I want to invite our partner in all of this, the Nevada County Arts Council Executive Director, Eliza Tudor, who will give us an overview of our during and curating process. Thank you, Eliza. Hello, everyone. And Livia, thank you so much. I'm Eliza Tudor, Executive Director at Nevada County Arts Council, and it's been our pleasure for many years now to partner with the Wild and Scenic Film Festival as a member of its Visual Arts Committee. And I would like to, to just do a little bit of a call out for our marvellous committee members, chaired by Livia, Roseanne Burke, Barbara Getz, Frida Scott and Carol Turner. At Nevada County Arts Council, like Wild and Scenic, we support the role of local and regional and actually far beyond visual artists as they too are recognized for the invaluable role that they perform in delivering a meaningful message about environmental activism and in relationships between, between society and the natural world. Through the festival's accompanying art exhibition every year, we challenge visual artists to share personal perceptions of the wild whether intimate habitats close to home or wild tracts of nature untouched. Wild and Scenic Film Festival, as I said last year, is a jewel in the crown of two of California's inaugural state cultural districts. 
Usually at this time of year, our streets and venues are flooded with locals and visitors from around the world, as it would have been this year. And I congratulate the Wild and Scenic team on again pivoting um, as it's so good at doing um, to create something meaningful in the virtual sphere this year. So each year we invite judges from across California to join us in appreciation of the many submissions from you, our artists, and our judges select awardees from different, different artistic disciplines as Livia described. I'd like to introduce our three judges for art at Wild and Scenic this year. Um, I'd like to first thank all three of them, um, Consuelo Cello Montoya, John Natsoulas and Joshua, or Josh Harrison. Both John and Josh are with us today, although we're sad to say that Cello couldn't be with us um, and Livia will be describing, speaking for her, um, having, having listened to some of her marvelous perceptions on some of the art that she was particularly touched by. I'm going to introduce um, them through the, the voice of their bios. Um, Cello is Assistant Vice President of Adult Education and Public Programs at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and previously Director of Education and Public Programs at the California African American Museum. She is one of California Arts Council's newest council members and this year is Vice Chair of the Council under Governor Gavin Newsom. John, John Natsoulas, uh, you are a founder of the John Natsoulas Gallery in Davis, California, the longest running gallery in the region, active for almost 40 years. John is a curator, lecturer, and expert on the Beat Generation and Funk Art Movement. He runs the largest art book publishing company on the West Coast, as well as being the founder of the California Conference for the Advancement of Ceramic Art and the Art of Painting in the 21st Century Conference, just to name a few of his, of his uh, incredible roles and affiliations. Josh Harrison, meanwhile, is a filmmaker, educator, and co-director of the Center for the Study of the Force Majeure, bringing artists, scientists, engineers, planners, and visionaries to design regenerative systems and policies that address climate change. Josh leads the Living Forests Project, a multidiscipline group working with the US Forest Service, the state of California, artists, teachers, local communities, businesses, and policy leaders to build a systems approach to the fire and water crises of California. In the 1980s, Josh assisted his parents, Newton and Helen Harrison, with artworks testing the possibilities of incorporating environmental concepts into everyday life. Among many other accolades, Josh is an early advisor to Nevada County Arts Council's Forest Fire Project, led by Llewellyn Studio, the culminating exhibition for which runs concurrently to the 2022 Wild and Scenic Film Festival. On behalf of our Visual Arts Committee at Wild and Scenic, we thank this year's artists for submitting such fabulous work, and we extend a warm welcome to our judges. Now, um, I think, Livia, you're going to begin by presenting Cello's award, is this right? Yeah. That's that's right. Um, like Eliza said, unfortunately, Cello cannot be here with us, but I'm honored to present this award um, to Rachel Palo. Using different elements forged during walks in nature, Rachel Palo creates an illusion with her artworks that defies our senses. When looking at her photographs, one could even say that the art could be placed in more than one category. The artist has three juried pieces in this year's exhibition. And for Cello Montoya, the winner is the poetically beautiful that you're seeing here at Home in the Wild. Congratulations, Rachel. Congratulations, Rachel, from me too, from all of us. Um, Josh, I invite you now to present your um, discretionary award 
um, in 2D and 3D. And perhaps you'd like to say a few words. Um, I've introduced you fairly substantially, but please, we'd love everyone to hear from you. Thank you, um, Livia, and thank you, Eliza, and thank you, the rest of the group at, who've organized this uh, really remarkable festival that combines plastic art, visual art, and community so, so effectively. Um, very sorry that it can't be there in person, but happy to have experienced what I can of it. Um, briefly, just uh, Eliza gave the outlines of what uh, some of my work and what my background is, but really my, my life's focus is looking at how we connect um, the world in which we live to the world that we need to, that the world that lives within us and we have suppressed and excluded in so many different ways. And the goal that we have as an institution at the center is to recover the relationships that used to exist with, between people and landscape and combine them with where we are so that we can look and rebalance our relationship uh, between life and nature. And that includes understanding that many things that we've spent a lot of time dividing and separating and isolating from each other really are interconnected and part of one. And that uh, nature in particular does not, natural systems do not recognize administrative boundaries. They don't recognize states. They don't recognize academic disciplines. They don't recognize you know, what grant affiliation is appropriate for what subsidy or, or any of the other sort of ways we categorize our own lives at the moment. And one of the things that we need to look at is ways to recuperate the kind of relationship that the world in which we live is there. Um, recover the kind of relationship which the world in which we live um, presents us on a daily basis in which we spend a lot of time and cheap energy pretending to ignore. So um, with that said, I was really, uh, just to echo what uh, Eliza and Livy have already said, I was really impressed by the breadth, depth, and sk skills associated with the work that was submitted. Um, it was in fact a, you know, a tough, tough choice. And as tough choices are, there's an element of the arbitrary and everything. And that said, I think everyone here every work that was selected um, had a tremendous amount of value. And, um, but, in, but I was, you know, as it might be expected, I was drawn to a couple and Jennifer Ruga's work uh, in particular um, spoke to this reconnection of the past and the present in a very, um, you know, a way that, that to me indicates, you know, a real understanding of how we have to recover our, under, our old understandings and bring them with the new. I love the way she refers to sort of the oldest plastic art forms we know, the, the cave paintings and pictographs that in some parts of the world date back 75,000 years. Recently, I've seen some indication that there are recognizable drawings that are over 100,000 years old. So uh, this is, among the oldest and most um, critical formation of visual practice that we have. And I think she's been very effective and very eloquent in the way she combines, um, again, this, these hunting rituals and motifs and these animal rituals and motifs with uh, a dexterity and skill that lives on the wall very, very effectively. So I was, and I think she, titled her work, Remember Hope from Ancient Ancestral Roots, which is in fact the theme of the festival, hope, experience, and future. So I found that this work spoke to me and that it spoke to the theme of the festival very effectively, and that's why I chose it. Um, there were, I guess you want me to talk about some of the other works that were in there too. Um, I also, um, was very taken by Linda, um, I'm going to get your name wrong, Linda Galusha, that's right, um, Linda Galusha's Fractured Rescue, which again, this is a work of 
you know, exceptional technical beauty and mystery and speaks to a path forward. We spend um, a lot of time storytelling and st we, a lot of our stories take, take us in from one state to another. And I thought that this particular painting spoke to the path forward that we are so desperately in need of in this terrible time in which we live and from which we hope to emerge. Um, and so I thought that this work generated a lot of plastic power, generated a, a visual story. And I thought that the emotional resonance that it gave was also quite effective. So I, I found it a very compelling piece. Um, and that's again, part of our award-winning process. And, and I do wanna say one more point with when you're during a festival, you come up with, you know, you're always choosing. And by choosing, you're also need to, again, confirm that this is a choice of, of a good one, of an excellent piece among many good pieces. So there was a, a you know, it was a tough choice, but I did feel this one was really, really effective. And I think the third piece um, that we, talked about was the sculptural piece. Sorry, that was Deborah Bridges within. Again, this is a, a work that, that, that drew all of us because of its technical ex excellence and its multimedia, effective use of multimedia collage and its kind of evocation both of who is this figure? What, is, what are they doing? What do they have? What is this? Um, structure they have on their head. How are they filled out along, you know, what, yeah, they're hanging in some place along a wall. It was a very, a very compelling use, a virtuoso piece of media. And it also, again, left on, left the viewer with a sense of mystery, awe and what, and, and uh, excellence for the future. And so I, we also found it quite compelling. Um, and uh, that's why we chose it as well. So congratulations to the three artists, their work, and congratulations to all of the artists for their work as well. Josh, thank you so much. Thank you for describing in such a beautiful, um, articulate and specific way um, <laughs> your process and thoughts. Um, and congratulations to the winners. Um, John, where are you? Hey, I'm right here. Wonderful. Okay. Um, we invite you to introduce um, the next round of awardees sure. to say a few words. Please go ahead. Okay. Are we going to show? No. Yes. Work? Okay. <clears throat> um, so I kind of want to preface this because um, Josh kind of covered everything that Shella and I um, said because we agreed uh, about these different pieces. So Josh kind of covered everything except this piece. But um, one of the things I really wanted to get across today to the viewers is that in all the competitions that I've juried, it's very difficult for us on our side. And it's very difficult for you if we're not going to be fair. And the reason why we can't be fair is Josh and I tell we had difficulty with quite a few images. <clears throat> so photography is really important. And then thinking about the concept of how we are going to see it. It's backlit, okay? So the sculpture just was not photographed well. And that's something that's pretty simple. You need to get a piece of paper, giant piece of paper, put it behind your piece and take a look at it yourself after you've taken the picture. So that's really critical to this. You know, um, I was really inspired um, by a lot of the work um, I felt like um, that it was um, dealing with my sense of the growing global malaise that's happening in, in my region and where I live. And I felt like um, it was a really beautiful display of work. Um, did we wanna see more tortured um, landscapes? Did we wanna see things that were not pleasant? Well, it, it would have been good to see some of that. So that was kind of missing. So. Um, on that note, I'm, I gave the judges award to Leanne Brooks because she has an amazing, the amazing ability to do abstraction. I bet you she's a great abstract expressionist painter. 
Um, my, my background is uh, I've studied in depth, um, in particular, the uh, Bayer Abstract Expressionism and Northern California Abstract Expressionism. I helped Susan Landauer. She got her PhD in Yale and published a book on Bayer Abstract Expressionism. And it's really interesting because I know this is in Bellinas, but it could be anywhere. But the wonderful thing about this is I think um, that Leanne really captured this lagoon. And the other part of this is that she has a great sense of color theory. Um, you know, what is a great painting after all? What is a great anything to, it's all based on drawing, architecture, sculpture, making buildings. So this was a really, beautiful piece. And it was difficult in this particular area of looking at paintings. It was difficult. There were a lot of great paintings and there was a lot of great photography. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited about the, the strong and compelling work that I saw. And um, I, I found myself um, really having a tough time with this work. You know, I looked at it before we juried it and I did not really have favorites nailed down yet. So that, that speaks volumes to what was provided. So is there anything else you want me to talk about, Eliza? Is that it? We have two more pieces. Okay, let's do um, it. John. Let's yes. do it. <clears throat> oh yeah, well, this was kind of a universal thing that the three of us agreed on. Um, and this, I think Josh, Josh was really pushing this hard because of the fact that I kind of felt it was very sculptural, very three-dimensional, and yet it had all the elements. It had the middle ground, the background. So it was a really, I think the, the photographer, Kirk Keeler, was really able to capture something that um, we're not able to capture. And you know, it's really, really difficult because you have to be there at the right time of the day and you have to be able to capture this. And he's just a phenomenal uh, photographer. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting about this is that we felt that uh, as photography goes, and this is really more of, more of uh, where Joshua was coming from as I'm more involved in painting and sculpture, was that it, it, it seemed to have just an, an amazing um, kind of uh, three-dimensional feel. And yet, if you look back, there's a little island, right? In Emerald Bay, I guess it is. And um, he, he managed to get the background um, and that contrast is just amazing. So, you know, a, a, a wonderful, strong, again, compelling piece that really is what um, California is all about. And it's just, just a really gorgeous place. And, you know, we're so lucky because you can have, you know, this horrible uh, kind of snow, cold weather, and then there's this sun comes out, you know, and we can ski in this, in this sun. It's pretty crazy, but this is beautiful, really beautiful. Congratulations, Kurt. Thank you so much, um, John. That's super. And then we, we have mm -hmm. one more awardee for you. To yeah, again, again, I mean, this kind of was a universal thing. I felt um, like the movement in this is just phenomenal. I mean, um, the trees, are they moving? I mean, you know, how many times have we been at the, the you know, in a forest at the base with the, with the, uh, um, at the base of these trees in the little forest and we're looking up and I don't think anybody ever really has captured this. I don't know how it was done. Eric is a phenomenal, this is a phenomenal piece. And um, I think that um, this concept of movement and life, and it kind of goes back to our theme. Um, this is a little wild and it, it, the proportions are um, kind of going upward and it gives you hope. You know, part of what we're talking about is hope. This gives me a lot of hope. And I think um, it's very successful. And you can look down at the, at the ground. I don't even know you know, is it moss or is it, it's probably another bush. It's the, the bottom of, of the forest and it's coming up. But anyway, if you look in the middle of the two trees, there's a, a green uh, tree back there. And it, 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 um, it's, it's done in a way 
which um, we just kind of dream about, about uh, this idea that we have hope. And it's, it's very uplifting. I, I felt that I felt really positive after looking at this and kind of wanted to go and be like the ferns in our forests and just be there on the ground, maybe lay down. I mean, I mean, how many times have you fallen in love and you're laying on the ground with this other person and you're looking up and you're saying, oh my God, we're so lucky to be alive and we're so lucky to live in this gorgeous environment. And I think Eric um, really captured it. And, and Joshua was really adamant, tell him they were both very adamant about the, picking this. And, and I don't know why, but we seem to have come together on quite a few of these images. So congratulations, fabulous piece. Thank you so much, John. And thank you, Josh, as well. Thank you both very much. Well, now's a special moment where we invite the winners themselves. So that's um, Jennifer, Linda, Deborah, um, Kirk, um, and Eric. If you're here, we'd love you to give you a little opportunity of just a couple of minutes each, just to speak about your, your individual pieces. Um, please let us know if you're here and, and um, Livia, did you want me to call each our winners up? Or? I'm unmuting them so they know. Um, Lovely. Eric. That sounds super. Please be forthcoming, ye winners. Hi, well, everybody. Uh, my name's Kirk. And um, I just um, uh, first, can, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, First of all, yeah, I'm very honored to be uh, chosen for this year's festival uh, as the photography winner. Um, just, uh, yeah, and and I, I know I only got one one in uh, submitted, so and the one in it won. So that's that's again uh, just amazing. So thank you to all the judges and and John, thank you for your words. Um, I really, uh, um, it's great hearing somebody else's way of seeing my my image. Uh, and I like that you saw the three dimensionality in there, because um, especially in the snow, that was something that I was really trying to uh, portray uh, in the foreground there. So uh, I'm glad that you uh, acknowledge that. But yeah, I think, um, um, you know, a little bit about it. Uh, I, my background, I, I worked at the Ansel Adams Gallery in uh, Yosemite for, for 10 years there. And, um, you know, perhaps some of you who have studied Ansel's work can probably see his his you know the fingerprints all over that uh, that image. Um, you know, I think, uh, like John said, being in the right place at the right time. That's you know, I I I was studying the uh, the storm. Clean. I I live here in Nevada City, and I was uh, a storm was was kind of moving through. I'm like, all right, I want to get to uh, Emerald Bay while the storm is clearing. So. Um, got up there and just everything kind of aligned properly for that uh, for that image and those trees were just kind of calling out my name and and uh, walked over there and and um, yeah and and the way the clouds were moving I, I probably took you know I don't know a, a 15 20 images but I, I really was waiting for the clouds to be in the right place at the right time as well so and it just magically happened that the the sun came out behind me and and um, you know, the, lit up the, the trees. So it's just one of those great moments um, that I was hoping for. So, um, but yeah, and, and I think the last thing is that, you know, I, I also, I think from Ansel, I've kind of learned the, um, to look for things where you can't see human being, like any signs of humanity. And that's kind of what a lot of, most of his photography was about, at least for the environmental uh, parts of his, of his work. Um, and so, um, you know, I would hope that, you know, when, when you're, someone's viewing that image that, you know, it could be today or it could be, you know, 200 years ago, it could be 300, 500 years ago, um, viewing that same landscape and, and hopefully it gives it a sense of timelessness. And, um, uh, as I said in my video, that's, I think on the, on the wild and scenic, uh, website, I, I, I didn't know that it was currents of hope uh, was the thing. And uh, um, I, was, I said in my video, I just, I hope it does give a sense of hope. So um, thank you so much, Kirk. That, yeah. That's, it, it has already given us all hope. 
you have given us all hope. So well done, congratulations. Thank Deborah, you. I can see you. Um, would you like to say a few words? We have Jennifer up. We have first. Jennifer, I'm so Eliza. sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> can you hear me all right? We can. Okay, thank you. Um, Gosh, the um, inspiration obviously uh, comes from my interest. I have a very high interest in cave art and um, Josh uh, expressed that quite well, I thought, in what he saw in my vision of um, my art. And uh, I like to sometimes imagine if I was a, a cave painter and I was up painting and and my child was uh, running around like they like kids do. And I would put paint on their hand and they put it on the wall and they'd run along the wall making these lines. And I, I just thought, what would their hopes be if they saw this or experiencing that? And how we've come to what we are today. So I Anyways, that was kind of the inspiration for uh, creating um, my art piece. And uh, one of the things that I particularly enjoy doing is hiking and collecting minerals and making them into paints. And I use all um, natural or uh, eco-friendly products uh, to make my uh pigments and I also work in clay and I use uh, make clay slips out of them. And then I experiment uh, with my paintings and in my clay work. So um, anyways, I was uh, quite um, thankful for the award and um, being a part of this. And I hope that we all get uh, an opportunity to reflect on our own selves and how we present our art and how the past has helped us to see those hopes that we can make changes. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Deborah. Okay, um, I guess I just have a few words. I think being a figurative sculptor, um, finding the connection between my work, this particular piece and the festival is, um, I didn't make the piece specifically in, in, um, for the festival, but when I looked around, I, I thought it fit. Um, and I guess just a, um, if, I would to, if I were to subtitle the piece, it's called Within, it would be uh, that change begins within. And so the, the festival being about the environment and the, everything about our world, um, I would mean to say by this piece that the changes that we want to see in the world have to begin in the depths of our own soul. And it's, that's, that's it, it's simply that. Thank you so much, Deborah. And who do we have here next? Um, Eric. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Um, I'll just say a few words about the image itself. Um, it's, it was really, uh, in many ways, a product of the pandemic. Um, when things shut down in, in March of 2020, um, I could no longer do the things I normally did for exercise. So I started riding my mountain bike up into Empire Mine State Park um, every day. And um, some, some days I brought my camera and I looked for good subjects and scenes to photograph and you know found some good things and some that I wasn't so happy with. But I, I sort of settled on um, some of the multi-trunk oak trees up there as really interesting subjects and took some photos that were okay. But I, I got the idea that, oh yeah, shooting them from ground level with a fisheye lens worked really well. Um, so I experimented with different trees and different angles and stuff. Um, and then one of the, 
benefits of going up to up in nature every every day as you notice seasonal changes. And in April, I was noticing that the trees were budding out and producing their flowers and small leaves. And, um, and I realized they were becoming very beautiful. And uh, especially at the at the end of the afternoon with the sun coming in and hitting them at an angle, it was it was really a really a, 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 a very nice subject to take a picture of. So I brought my camera up um, one day when there were clouds and took um, a bunch of photos of different trees. And um, this 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 one um, was was one of the ones that I that I did that I was very happy with. Um, I I didn't really think of it as expressing hope per se when I when I took it, but I'm glad it has that meaning for other people. Thank you, Eric. Leanne? Is Leanne here? Leanne Brooks. I'm, I'm here. I don't know if you can see me. We can't. I think you have to put your, your video on. We can certainly hear you. Start my video. Okay. There we go. Is it there? Nope. Oh, we can see and hear you, Lian. Can you see me? Yes. We oh, okay. Can. Okay. I um, thank you so much for uh, carrying on Wild and Scenic um, and through unusual times, you really have to be able to roll with the punches. And I think the solution of, of putting some art up in town was really, really important. So us, so all of us can still see there is still a real world as well as a virtual world. Um, the piece that is in Wild and Scenic, um, I've been a participating artist since the very beginning of when they've had the art competition. And it's right up my alley because my, my theme in painting always is nature and it's the land. And as John noticed that it's like, you know, my thing really is about abstraction and about color. So much that um, when I work on a painting, I don't ever work from photographs. I'm an avid photographer, but I put those aside and I go back to like, what has really stuck with me when I go through the landscape, when I go travel wherever, what's really caught my attention. So all of my paintings are done from memory of where I've been. And this painting was interesting because I painted it with a design in mind, perhaps it kind of grew because I used a lot of charcoal in with the paint that tends to really take on a life of its own. You have to see the piece in person to appreciate it. Um, and I just kept painting and the color is just so intuitive to me that the painting just grew as, as they typically do when I paint. And I let the painting kind of take over. It's like, okay, you're in charge. What I didn't even realize where it was until I was done with it, which is happens to me a lot. I finished the painting and I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's Bellina's Lagoon, which we've been to a lot. We go camping a lot in Point Reyes area and I love the Bellina's Lagoon. I photographed it a little bit, but not much at all. And what I really resonated with is what Josh said, is that there's this tangible world, but I really think what art is about that John mentioned is it's the world that lives within us. And that's what I carry with me is what that inspiration that I see from the landscape comes into me. I'm really just a conduit. I think all of us are as artists, we're just conduits. And I think it's really important to just kind of listen to what nature gives us inside. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, Leanne. It's so inspiring hearing directly from you as artists. Um, and I'm going to be calling upon, I think the, the final artist awardee 
And that's Linda. Linda, are you here? I think so. I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello, Linda. Yes, we can see and hear you. Oh, good. Because I, I can't tell. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've been working on this particular painting, uh, Fractured Rescue. That's kind of my COVID painting when things were really, really, really dark on, you know, COVID piled on top of uh, the climate change, which is climate crisis now. And the last few paintings that I've done uh, have been about the climate crisis and the change because I really, really treasure the woods and, and my walks. I walk in the Empire Mine and I completely understand uh, the, the trees and, and the, I see the changes. And two years ago, I was thinking uh, in terms of um, how they're not changing as much. The, it's because it's like it's the winters are warmer and the summers are everything's flattened out and uh, it's getting quieter. You don't hear the birds and the bugs and the bees so much anymore. And this particular painting, actually, I do take my paintings lightly from photographs that my daughter has taken because she also uh, walks and runs in the woods. And because I'm familiar with these walks, they, it resonates with, with, with me. But I don't copy. I need to talk about the paintings. And I talk visually. And so oftentimes it's very difficult to take that and put it into words, language words that we write down. Um, I, I like to think that I am painting poetry, that my, I, I use the language that we speak of art with in order to, um, to make to put these pieces together that's what i'm responding to so this piece fractured rescue indicates to me how fractured we are as a people and and what it means to uh rescue the planet that are the uh the, the trees that um and the water and the birds and, and, and all those things but the the path is the path is there, the light is there, um, but we have to pay attention. We, we, we should, um, hopefully we can follow it. And yet, um, gee, again, like I said, words are difficult to put together when it's the painting and, and it's the work and uh, how I interacted with speaking to you through that is, um, hopefully that resonates and that makes some sense to you. Um, I don't do this very well you know, with, with, with talking. So um, you do it beautifully. You've you've articulated it almost as beautifully as you've painted it. So thank well, you so much. And you're so kind, Eliza, to say so. <laughs> Not at <Yeah>. all. <laughs> and well, I and I appreciate being selected. I, I really do. It's it's an honor. And I am so glad that the circle is here and that the Wild and Phoenix Film Festival is here because it gives us an opportunity. To speak of these things, they are part of that path. To, yeah, uh, make yeah. a, a huge hand to, to Wild and Scenic and, and to the South Huber River Citizens League Circle for, for dreaming up such an extraordinary festival that's become so important within America and internationally over the years. And Livia, I believe now that um, we have just a couple of minutes, you know, five minutes or so, to kind of open it up to everyone. Um, for questions and comments and thoughts from from folks. What do you think, Livia? That sounds great. Um, and just to say, you, mm. does people know how to raise their hands on Zoom um, or just raise your actual, actual hand? I almost recommend taking everyone off at the risk of being a bit crazy because we have so little time it might do away with That's the mechanics of it. That's a good idea. Let's do <laughs> that. Yes. We'll all be very well behaved. You should be able to unmute yourselves if you want now. Now you can unmute yourselves. So please thoughts yeah, from that, that painting behind you is stunning. Can we get a better look at it? Who? Which? Leanne. Oh, Leanne. Yeah, the painting behind you was stunning. 
Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You need to unmute I, yourself. I, mean, I told her. I told her it was stunning. That's enough. Unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, we were, um, just because the other juror's not here, we, we, uh, we recognized that, you know, your, your sculpture was head and shoulders uh, above, um, you know, this kind of thing. It was really, really well done. But the, again, I, I think you're really talented, but you, you could um, really gain from spending, you know, three or four hours with learning a little bit more on how to take the photos. There were Hi. dark areas. No, it's okay. Hi. It's okay. You're, you're, you're amazing. You were amazing. And, and the sculpture we looked at, um, we, we thought you were head and shoulders above what we've seen. You look like a really professional sculptor. You don't, you know, it, it I, you know, we were really impressed. The thing is though, I think um, there, there are elements that we didn't see. And I think this is a problem with a lot of competitions is we don't actually get close-ups, So we don't actually get to see uh, what the artists are doing. And this is really important for sculpture. But anyway, right. I, I, I mean, the three of us were really impressed. And I, and I think that's, you know, kind of, kind of a, a testament to um, where you are with your career. Your work mm -hmm. is, is amazing. Thank you. I might hit you up on recommendations for a photographer. Yeah, you know, we got it. You know, unfortunately, we have to learn this. Well, you, you know, there's a lot of photographers out there, you know, that are listening right now that could help you. Oh, yeah, right here, right? Yeah, right, in, <laughs> right there in, in Nevada City. Grass right. Valley, there's hey, everybody. Of them. They're phenomenal. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, it is an issue with, with a three dimensional work to capture the piece in one image. You know, I, I w wished I could have submitted a close up, a different angle, but that wasn't allowed. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I, yeah. I do, I mean it. If there's any photographer, well, Kirk and Eric, yep. they could, they could yes. do it. No problem. You just have yep. to pay them a little money. Okay. Not, not only, not only angles, but lighting. I think lighting can really yeah. help. Yep. Okay. Well, Thank you so much. That was a wonderful point, John. And thank you, Deborah, for answering. Anyone else? We have so many great artists with us today. As so many wonderful faces that I recognize and wonderful faces that I don't. Any thoughts from, from you all about um, what you've experienced through this year's exhibition? So actually from, from the artists, you want to hear from us? Yes. Okay, cool. So I just, uh, again, uh, for those of you on this uh, Zoom meeting who haven't gone down to Fable yet, do yourself a favor and go. Um, uh, I, I went down yesterday and helped put it up and uh, it's just um, outstanding. All, all, every, all the uh, paintings and um, the the sculpture and the, and the photography are just, um, they look great in there. So go, go check it out. Fantastic, Kirk, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks so much again to the Visual Arts uh, Committee for Wild and Scenic, for Art at Wild and Scenic, because they did a, a miracle turning it around and getting the art installed. And, and thanks too to Fable Coffee for hosting us. Mm -hmm. We have just a couple um, more minutes. George. Well, as I can, uh, I'd just like to jump in as a board member at Circle and, and express our deep appreciation to uh, all the artists who contributed. And it's so cool to have local folks, you know, folks we actually know um, contribute and even win awards. Uh, and, and, a, and a giant shout out to the Wild and Scenic Film Festival staff that has pulled off this miraculous response to a last minute uh, change in, in, in function. Um, uh, just an amazing team. Um, we're, really, we're really proud of the, of the film festival and, and are so thankful for uh, Melinda's leadership and, and her uh, film festival team and, and what they've produced. This is, a great, this is a great event. Thank you, Eliza and Livia for um, for your guidance on this. And thanks, many, many thanks to the artists. 
Well, we are, George, it's so, so great that, that you would say that. I'm, I'm just so happy that we've welcomed Livia um, this year as festival director. Um, she's just done an amazing job. Congratulations, Livia. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eliza. Thank you, everyone. This is my first year. Um, it's um, a challenging year for sure, but it's a, it's a great year as well. As I mentioned in the beginning, I was so impressed with all the arts. Um, we have a stellar slate, a slate of films um, at the festival that I invite you all to um, to check it out. So thank you again to all the artists, to the board, to Melinda for bringing, um, for, for taking a chance on me, um, someone who's not, who's not a local, but who loves community and social impact, um, environmental films. So I'm super excited to be here with you all. That's wonderful. And I, I um, posted in the chat, um, where to find Fable Coffee, just in case anyone's unfamiliar with their new uh, venue at 233 Broad Street. That's the corner where the old City Council Cafe, audaciously called City Council Cafe used to be. Um, and also Eric has posted a link to the virtual art exhibition. And once you're on that page, you'll be able to link to all other pages for Wild and Scenic Film Festival, because we hope that everyone is going to participate and watch multiple films every day from now and in fact throughout the rest of the year. <laughs> Livia would you like to just say a closing word or two we're actually at almost at time now. Yeah um, I mean once again thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Congratulations to the art winners. Um, don't forget to tune in to learn about the incredible artists that we have um, in our virtual art exhibition. Um, Eliza already said the link is on the chat. And I invite you again to check the, the films that we selected at this, this year's festival. Um, the link is also on the chat. The festival starts today and goes until the, the, the 23rd. So you have plenty of time to check out the, the amazing films that we brought to you this year. Um, and, and I think that's that's it. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you again for joining. We have some other special programming um, throughout the days that the festival is, is running. So I hope to see you all. Thank you so much, Livia. Thanks, Wild and Scenic team. And thank you all our judges, Josh and John and Cello, and to all of you marvelous artists. Just keep submitting and keep doing what you do. See you soon.